<laughs> Everyone, we are going to be talking about the Germander problem now. Uh, it talks about an array that we have of size n. And n in turn is equal to O1 into O2. So these are two odd integers that we have. And they represent the number of states and size of each state. So the original problem says that we have a country of size n and that country is broken down into states which are contiguous blocks. Now each block is of size O2 and our job is to say if what is the outcome of an election. So in this country we have an election such that people vote for two candidates, two possible candidates, either zero or one. And uh, well, because O1 and O2 are odd integers, you are guaranteed to have a result in this election. So the, the votes are taken into consideration per state and then to be president you need a majority of states to vote for yourself. So for example, in this case we have 5. So 5 into 1, let's say. The number of states that you have is 5, each state is a size 1. These are the states that we have. And so there's, there's no concept of majority here. 0 wins, 1, 0, 1, 1. And finally, uh, President 1 becomes, I mean, 1 becomes the president here. So our job is to say that for any configuration, is it possible for President 1 to win? So the most obvious approach is to take the array over here. And you can have a detailed description about this question in the link below. But we try to break it into contiguous blocks with a particular offset. So the only offset that matters is uh, how much of a difference you have from the starting position. What I mean by that is, let's say you have an offset of 0. So your first state is going to stop at somewhere around k. So I, that is, which is equal to O2, but I don't want to mix up the 0 and O2. So k, then we have 2k, and so on and so forth, till array ends. For the second one, which is the interesting case, and the general one also, is that we start at offset of 1, the next state goes to k plus 1, and so on and so forth, till you cyclically reach this final state, having k minus 1 blocks at the end, and one block at the start. So this is how cyclically you can uh, break the blocks into different states. For into different configurations and check whether um, you know a person is winning or not. So the total number of configurations that you can have is up to from zero to one to O2. That's the maximum uh, configurations you need to check. And in each one, you will check for every state what are the number of votes. If there's a majority, that's a state vote. If the state votes are in majority of zero, zero wins. Otherwise, one wins. This solution is O2 because that's the number of configurations that we have. O2 into, we are doing a linear scan. So that is n. So order of O2 into n. Which in the worst case, of course, is order of n square. So that's pretty bad. That is quite bad. Can we do better? Yes. Well, the approach is almost exactly the same. So let's let's have a look at that. Instead of just jumping into a linear scan, what we are going to do first is pre-compute for every um, index from 0 to i, what is the sum? So this is the original array. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And what we need is the sum of all elements up to i, from i equal to 0 to j, for every j. This can be done very easily, you can just do a linear scan and store them in a separate array above. We call this cumulative. And this array stores from, uh, at the 0th index it stores a of 0. And at any index i, it stores 
cumulative of i equal to a of i plus cumulative of i minus 1. Yeah, any, for any less greater than 0. So this is a simple procedure and now you can find for any given range left to right the sum of that range is going to be uh, cumulator of right minus cumulator of left which is what you are looking for alright and what is this sum? this sum is the number of votes number of vo people who are voting for one because zero is not going to affect the sum so number of people who are voting for one you already have L and R so you know the difference you know the size of the state you know the number of people voting for one you can easily find out if that's a majority or not alright and going back to our old scenario of checking for every state O2 states uh, now instead of you know doing a linear scan you're going to make jumps jumps of size O2 so now when you're starting at zero with offset zero and you want all the number of people voting for one up to k all you need to do is do c of k minus c of 0 and you have your answer similarly c of 2k minus c of k is going to give you your second state answer and so on and so forth till you have for every state what is the uh, number of votes and then for each state you can calculate whether the majority is making president 1 the president or not So let's do some time complexity analysis of these. Firstly, we have O2 configurations. So offset 0, offset of 1, offset of whatever up to offset of O2. And in each configuration, you are making O1 jumps up to up to size k, size k. This is 2k, this is 3k. So, you are making O1 jumps, which gives you order of O1, and you have O2 configurations. Excuse me. And you have O2 configurations, so that is order of O2, which in turn gives you order n, which is the required time complexity. So, that's it, a simple problem. The third most solved one, but we solved it in just. I'm pretty proud that I solved it in just about 10 minutes at home, so yeah. <laughs>